Hey guys, it's Krista from LCRC and today's new video Wednesday is all about tire prep for oval racing. A few weeks ago on Hump Day Happy Hour, Kevin and I showed you the behind the scenes process of how he broke in and got ready his dirt oval tires for sprint car racing. Today I take a little snippet of that and share it with you guys so you have quick access. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. We'll be happy to answer them for you. And also there is a link down below in the description to all the products that he used in his break-in process. Thank you guys for watching. One that I had built, I don't know, a couple weeks ago before we went. And I have the other three in the set that it didn't get built because I had to go, didn't have enough time. So we're gonna take, and we're gonna go back in the shop and I am going to share with you the process in which we do this. Yeah, so get prepared. This is your behind the scenes in the shop moment. So here we go. Okay. <laughs> so I I do realize not, not everyone has a mini lathe, okay? You, you can use a regular drill. Uh, I have the AKA mandrel in this, in, in, the, in the lathe. Uh, that's what I use to turn the t turn the tread off and turn them into ghosts or slicks. Um, it's super easy. And, and again, you can just use a regular drill or if you do get the $79 Harbor Freight drill press to run the foam buster in, okay? Um, you can also chuck the tire up in here in order to uh, take the tread off as well. So we're gonna go ahead and fire this thing up. I do run it at a fairly high RPM. I have my sanding paddle with super coarse paper on one side and 800 grit on the other. Be very careful, but we're gonna take the tread off. You have to be careful not to get the tire too hot because it will blister and fold under. So I like to flip it over and, and do a little bit of the fine, the finer sandpaper before I shut it off. I know it's probably hard to see on camera, but most of the tread is gone. It's just feathered super heavy. So we're actually going to change direction on the lathe, uh, which you can do on your drill. And then we're going to take brown scotch bright. And we're going to take the burrs off the back side by running it in reverse. Uh, some guys are very picky about making sure that you uh, do the final sand or the final prep in the direction in which the tire is actually going to run. Uh, I've found over time that it, it really doesn't make much of a difference. So now we're now we're down to. It's, it's all but ghost. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take just a scotch more off the middle. Uh, we're going to run it the other direction. You don't have to press very hard. It doesn't take a whole lot of energy to burn the tread right off of that thing. And as you can see, you know, there's, there's barely any tread left. So are you doing this before you foam roll or after? Always before. So you want to mount, you want to mount the tire just like you would, you know, new before you do any prep work to the rubber or the foam, because when I mentioned earlier about blistering, so if you push the paddle, like when you're doing it, if you push the paddle real hard, the, the rubber will actually get that warm that it'll fold over and it'll make a blister and essentially it'll ruin the tire. So you have to be super careful. Um, as you can see on the edges, like you can't roll over the edge real hard or it'll, you'll actually hurt the carcass of the tire. So um, this tire, it's ready to go in the foam roller. Now, in the drill press for the foam roller, I've chosen the, the J Concepts uh, tire 
arbor because it's actually you can make it go either direction so you say why is that important well again some of these guys believe that you have to roll the tire in the direction in which you're going to drive it uh, to have it be you know the most effective again i've found uh, I, i'm sorry I, I roll them all in the same direction because i'm too lazy to switch it around but the concepts when once you tighten up the tire you can actually undo it from the chuck and flip it upside down and chuck this end in the drill to make it go backwards because these cheap drill presses don't have a reverse function so actually before we do that so we're going to take i'm using the the larger one in the shop but we're actually going to have these uh this size for sale with the needle oiler on them uh, it's just the needle that twists in the top and it's got the cover on it uh, we're going to have these for sale next week and in a little bit of a a, a package deal uh, but anyway i take the liquid wrench with the needle i actually poke it through the foam so i'm now in between the wheel and the foam, give it a little squeeze, come around to the other side. I do the same thing. How much do you put in? I don't know. I give it a pretty good little squeeze. Um, walk it around a little bit. Wiggle your foam roller up on there. I actually keep mine, I keep mine fairly tight. Um, I do use I do use a little bit of liquid wrench on a rag to keep it lubricated between the rollers. Um, it's it's not a necessity, but it do, it does control the heat. So then, one thing you have to be careful, especially when your beautiful wife's standing here, when you first turn it on, it can throw a little bit out. Very noisy. Remember, we have a four-year-old sleeping. So anyway, because the kid's sleeping, so we don't want to get too crazy. But so I will let that run. I actually take my cell phone. I set a twenty-minute timer, and I walk away. And at the end of 20 minutes, I'll come back and I actually, I use the needle oiler and I'll just give it a little squirt while it's running. And again, don't do it in your good polo because you'll have liquid wrench sprayed all over you. But anyway, I try and keep a little bit of lubrication on here. Uh, the only reason I stop it at 20 minutes, it just seems to be a nice break. You can come over, shut the drill off. I will actually take and I'll, I'll take the foam roller off. I'll double check that I'm not getting too warm or have anything going wrong. And then I'll do it for another 20. I usually do it three 20 minute sessions, take them off, you know, rotate them around. And then I'll come back and do it again for another one to two 20 minute sessions per tire to make them the magical holy trail of dirt oval. And then that's it, right? And then that's it until the night before you're ready to go to the track. Then we do what we call the burn in, which is you, you chuck the mandrel in an actual drill, take yourself a microfiber towel, fold it up nice, spray it with aerosol liquid wrench, and take the drill and burn it in to where the tire is actually smoking, like smoking hot. And what that does, the heat opens up the pore. So... This is what your tire section looks like when you're a hobby shop owner. No, no, no. That's what your tire section looks like when you're a hobby shop Ridiculous. owner. <laughs> I am an eight scale guy at heart, just saying. Anyway, so these these are so puffy and so sticky. I haven't I haven't touched these since I left Bloomsburg from a Segner series race on Saturday. I wash them with moto wash and put them back in this tube that Saturday before I left. And these things are so sticky. They're, they're literally sticking together. Okay. 
that's how amazing this stuff is. But anyway, it, it, I'm telling you, it, it's an art. 